The Shag Harbor UFO incident, which occurred on October 4th, 1967, is one of Canada's most intriguing unexplained phenomena. The event unfolded near Shag Harbor, a small fishing village located in Shelbourne County, Nova Scotia, and has been a subject of both military investigation and public fascination ever since. Join us today as we dive into the story of this historic UFO sighting that still remains unresolved. On the evening of October 4, 1967, a series of unusual observations set the stage for the Shag Harbor incident. At approximately 7.15 p.m., Air Canada Flight 305, en route from Halifax to Toronto, encountered an extraordinary sight. The flight crew, consisting of Captain Pierre Charambeau and First Officer Robert Ralph, spotted a bizarre brilliantly lit rectangular object moving parallel to the aircraft at 12,000 feet. The object, described as having a string of smaller lights trailing behind it, seemed to perform maneuvers that defied typical aircraft behavior. As the pilots observed, the object emitted two silent explosions, creating a blue cloud that enveloped it. This anomalous occurrence was noted in the flight's log and reported to air traffic control, marking the beginning of a night filled with unexplained phenomena. Around the same time, various witnesses reported seeing strange phenomena in the skies over Nova Scotia. In Mahone Bay, Daryl Dory, his sister Annette, and their mother noticed a large object maneuvering in the southwestern sky. Dory, intrigued and concerned, subsequently contacted the Royal Canadian Air Force at Greenwood Base to inquire about the unidentified object. In Sambro, Nova Scotia, Captain Leo Howard Mercy of the MV Nickerson observed four blips on his radar, which were stationary but appeared to be moving in a roughly rectangular formation. The crew of the vessel watched the objects, describing them as bright and unusual. Mersey reported the sighting to the Rescue Coordination Center and filed a detailed account with the RCMP upon returning to port. In Halifax, local media outlets, including the Chronicle Herald and various radio stations, began receiving calls from residents who reported seeing glowing objects in the sky. By 10 p.m., multiple witnesses had reported similar sightings, further compounding the night's mysterious events. At approximately 11.20 p.m., Atlantic Daylight Time, the Shag Harbor UFO incident reached its climax. Local resident Lori Wilkins, along with four friends, was driving along Highway 3 when they noticed a large object descending into the waters off Shag Harbor. They observed the object floating about 250 to 300 meters offshore. According to their accounts, the object emitted a whistling sound, followed by a whoosh and a loud bang as it entered the water. Wickens immediately contacted the RCMP in Barrington Passage, reporting what he believed to be a crash of a large airplane or small airliner into the harbor. Given the initial assumption that an aircraft had crashed, RCMP officers arrived at the scene within about 15 minutes. The RCMP contacted the Rescue Coordination Center in Halifax, informing them of a situation and inquiring whether any aircraft were missing. Before any rescue efforts could commence, the object, which had been visible with its lights on, began to sink and eventually disappeared from view. A search and rescue operation was swiftly organized. Local fishing boats, alongside a Canadian Coast Guard cutter from Clark Harbor, began scouring the waters for survivors or debris. Despite their efforts, no bodies, wreckage, or other evidence of the object were found. The Coast Guard cutter arrived about an hour after the incident was reported, but also found no trace of the mysterious object. By the morning of October 5th, RCC Halifax confirmed that no aircraft were missing. The search continued, but the focus shifted from rescuing survivors to locating any possible debris. RCC Halifax sent a telex to the Air Force headquarters in Ottawa, informing them that all conventional explanations had been ruled out and categorizing the event as a UFO report. The Canadian military's involvement in the Shag Harbor incident escalated when the Navy was informed about the unidentified object. The Navy, prompted by the Air Desk's recommendation, tasked Fleet Diving Unit Atlantic with conducting an underwater search. For the following three days, Navy divers meticulously clombed the seafloor of the Gulf of Maine near Shag Harbor. Despite their thorough search, no trace of the object was found. The Canadian government maintained an official stance of cautious inquiry. The Department of National Defense files related to the incident remained archived, providing a documented account of the military's investigation. However, these documents did not yield conclusive evidence about the nature of the object that had crashed into Shag Harbor. 
The Shag Harbor incident captured widespread media attention, both in Canada and internationally. The reports of glowing objects, mysterious explosions, and the subsequent military response fueled speculation and public interest. Various theories emerged, ranging from experimental aircraft to extraterrestrial spacecraft, though none were definitively proven. Now let's dive into the Varinghai UFO incident that's even more mysterious and controversial. The Varinghai UFO incident, often referred to as Brazil's Roswell, is one of the most famous and controversial UFO events in South America. It took place in Varinha, a small city in the state of Minas Gerais, Brazil, in January 1996. The incident allegedly involved sightings of alien beings, a UFO crash, and a subsequent military cover-up. The case gained widespread media attention both in Brazil and internationally, and remains one of the most puzzling UFO stories in modern history. On January 20, 1996, multiple reports came in from residents of Arinha and its surrounding areas claiming to have seen strange, unidentifiable creatures and unexplained lights in the sky. The first reports began with local teenagers who supposedly encountered strange beings in the vicinity of their neighborhood. The story gained traction due to the consistency of the witness reports and the alleged involvement of the military and local authorities, who were said to have cordoned off certain areas and removed evidence from the scene. The local press quickly latched onto the event, and soon the Varinha incident became an international sensation. The first sighting occurred in the early morning of January 20th, 1996. Residents in and around Varinha reported seeing a cigar-shaped UFO flying low over the city. Witnesses described it as moving erratically, as if it was in distress or malfunctioning. Some claimed to have seen smoke or steam emanating from the craft, and others reported hearing strange humming or buzzing sounds. Many of these sightings were attributed to farmers and rural workers who were accustomed to the natural landscape and would likely notice something out of the ordinary. One of the more widely discussed aspects of the incident is a sighting made by three young women, sisters Lilian and Valkyria Fatima Silva, aged 16 and 14, and their friend, 22-year-old Katia Andrade Xavier. Around 3.30 p.m. on January 20th, the girls were walking through an undeveloped area of Varinha, known as Jardim Andere, when they came across what they initially thought was an injured or deformed animal crouching by a wall. As they approached, they realized that it was something far stranger than any animal that they'd ever seen. The girls described the creature as humanoid, approximately four to five feet tall, with a thin body and large, red, glowing eyes. The skin was described as dark brown and oily, with what appeared to be veins or bumps covering parts of its body. Its head was large in proportion to its body, and it had three short ridges or horns on its forehead. The creature was said to be trembling and appeared weak, perhaps injured or frightened. They noted that the being did not appear aggressive, and despite its strange appearance, it gave off an air of vulnerability. The sight of this creature terrified the girls, and they fled the scene in a panic, running all the way back to Lilian and Valkyria's home. Once there, they breathlessly told their mother what they had seen. Initially, their mother didn't believe them, but the girl's shaken state eventually convinced her that they had witnessed something out of the ordinary. The family then returned to the spot where the girls had seen the creature, but by that time, it was gone. All that was left was a strange, lingering odor in the air, which the girls compared to the smell of ammonia or sulfur. Now, in the days following the sighting, the story began to spread throughout Farinha. Local authorities, including the military police, were said to have become involved, and witnesses claimed to have seen military personnel in the area conducting searches and removing strange objects or remains. There were rumors that the Brazilian military had cordoned off an area of the city near the site of the sighting and were seen transporting a strange, small creature on a stretcher, possibly injured or dead. According to some witnesses, the military took this to a local hospital for examination before transferring it to a secret military facility for further study. Local hospital workers reportedly saw the creature being brought in, though they were warned by military personnel to remain silent about what they had seen. There were also claims that a strange metallic object, possibly a damaged UFO, had crashed somewhere outside the city and was also recovered by the military. Witnesses described seeing military trucks and helicopters in the area during the days following the incident, further fueling speculation that something extraordinary had occurred. Several military officials later came forward, either anonymously or after retirement, to give their accounts of what transpired. 
Some of these individuals corroborated the reports of strange beings and unidentified craft, though others dismissed the entire event as a misunderstanding or even a hoax. One of the most notable testimonies came from a retired army officer who claimed to have been involved in the recovery operation. He described seeing a small humanoid creature, similar in appearance to what the three young women had described, and confirmed that it had been taken to a military facility for study. Despite the numerous witness testimonies, the Brazilian government has consistently denied any involvement in a UFO incident in Varinha. They have dismissed the reports as baseless and maintained that no UFO or extraterrestrial beings were ever recovered. In the weeks following the initial sightings, several rumors began to circulate about what had happened to the creature allegedly captured by the military. One of the most persistent claims was that an autopsy had been performed on the being, either at a local hospital or at a secret military installation. According to the story, a team of doctors and scientists were brought in to examine the creature's remains, and their findings were kept under wraps by the Brazilian government. Various conspiracy theories arose around this time, with some speculating that the United States government had also become involved, assisting the Brazilian military in recovering and studying the creature. Some ufologists have drawn parallels between the Varinha incident and the Roswell UFO crash in the United States, suggesting that the Brazilian government may have been pressured into secrecy by their American counterparts. There were also reports of a second creature being discovered around the same time as the first, though this has never been substantiated. Some witnesses claimed that two beings were recovered from the crash site, with one dying shortly after capture and the other surviving for a brief period before succumbing to its injuries. The official explanation given by the Brazilian government and military was that the creature seen by the girls was actually a homeless, mentally ill man known in the area. This man, according to authorities, suffered from physical deformities and was often seen wandering the streets of Rinha. The military and police involvement, they claimed, had nothing to do with UFOs or extraterrestrial beings, but was instead related to routine operations in the area. However, this explanation was met with skepticism by many in the UFO community and among local residents as well. The girls who had seen the creature were adamant that what they encountered was not human, and several other witnesses came forward with similar stories of seeing strange beings or unexplained lights in the sky around the time of the incident. Despite the large number of witnesses and the consistent descriptions of the creature, there are many who remain skeptical of the Varinha incident. Skeptics point out that no concrete evidence has ever been produced to support the claims of UFOs or extraterrestrial beings. There are no photographs, videos, or physical artifacts that can be definitively linked to the event. And many of the key witnesses have either retracted their statements or have decided to remain anonymous, making it difficult to verify their accounts. Critics also argue that the entire incident may have been the result of mass hysteria or a collective misunderstanding. Given the media attention surrounding UFOs at the time, it's possible that the witnesses' descriptions of the creature were influenced by popular depictions of aliens in movies and television. Additionally, the rural setting and the fact that many of the witnesses were young or uneducated could have contributed to the spread of rumors and exaggerated accounts. UFOologists and UFO researchers, on the other hand, believe that the Varinha incident is one of the most credible UFO cases in modern history. Several prominent investigators have spent years studying the case, interviewing witnesses, and collecting evidence. These researchers argue that the consistency of the witness testimonies, combined with the alleged military involvement and subsequent cover-up, suggests that something extraordinary did indeed happen in Varinha. In 2004, a document titled O Caso Varinha, The Varinha Case, was released in Brazil, examining the incident in detail and featuring interviews with witnesses, military personnel, and UFO researchers. The film reignited interest in the case and introduced it to a wider international audience. Over the years, several theories have been proposed to explain the events of January 1996. The most popular theory among UFOologists is that a UFO, possibly malfunctioning or damaged, crashed in the rural outskirts of Varinha. The creatures seen by the girls and other witnesses were likely survivors or scouts from the craft, who were either injured in the crash or had left their ship for some other reason. Some researchers have speculated that the military may have captured one or more of these beings and then taken them to a secret facility for study, similar to what is believed to have happened in the Roswell incident. 
the lack of physical evidence and the government's refusal to acknowledge the event, they argue, is part of a broader pattern of cover-ups involving UFOs and extraterrestrial life. Others have suggested more exotic explanations, such as the idea that the beings encountered in Varinia were not extraterrestrial, but rather interdimensional, meaning they came from a parallel universe or alternate reality. This theory, while less popular, has gained some traction in recent years, especially among those who believe that UFO phenomena could be linked to more than just physical extraterrestrial visitors. Proponents of the interdimensional theory suggest that what people witnessed in Varinia might have been beings from a different dimension who accidentally, or perhaps even purposefully, slipped into our reality. They argue that the strange appearance of the creatures, their weak or sickly condition, and the unusual craft could be consistent with entities who do not normally exist in our world and who are struggling to adapt to its physical laws. The idea of a government and military cover-up remains central to many versions of the Varinia UFO story. Witnesses have repeatedly claimed that after the initial sightings of both the UFO and the beings, military and police forces arrived quickly on the scene, which raises questions about how authorities were able to mobilize so fast if the incident was as unexpected as claimed. Some UFOologists suggest that the Brazilian government may have had prior knowledge of the craft's arrival or had been tracking it before the crash. Witnesses also reported seeing strange trucks and unmarked vehicles moving through the city in the days following the incident. Some of these vehicles were allegedly seen transporting what appeared to be bodies, either of the creatures or perhaps injured military personnel who came into contact with them. This, coupled with the rumors of an autopsy, only fueled suspicions that something significant was being hidden from the public. One of the most persistent claims in the cover-up narrative is the involvement of foreign powers, particularly the United States. According to some sources, the U.S. government may have pressured Brazilian authorities to contain the incident and keep it quiet. Some even claim that the American military personnel were seen in the area during the cleanup operations, although no concrete evidence has been produced to support this. There were also allegations that key witnesses were silenced or intimidated. Several of the hospital staff members who were reported to have seen the creature being brought in later refused to speak to investigators. Some of them were allegedly told to keep quiet by military personnel, while others simply vanished from public view, leading to speculation that they had been coerced into silence or relocated to prevent further leaks. One of the most tragic and controversial aspects of the Varinha incident was the death of Marco Eli Cereze, a 23-year-old military police officer. Cereze was reportedly involved in the operation to capture one of the strange beings, and shortly after the incident, he fell gravely ill, he was taken to the hospital and treated for an unknown infection, but died just a few days later under mysterious circumstances. According to some accounts, Cereze had been one of the officers tasked with handling the creature and had come into direct physical contact with it during its capture. His symptoms, nausea, fever, and intense pain, were said to resemble those of someone exposed to a toxic or highly infectious agent. His family and some of his colleagues believed that his death was linked to the incident and that he had contracted a disease or poison from the creature. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching it, please take a moment and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this.